Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now, brought to you by www.pentesteruniversity.org, uh, which is our school that we created for you guys to be able to learn in an organized fashion, and it's super affordable. So definitely check that out. Links in the description and links on the screen. So today I wanted to make a video about a tool called DNS Enum. And I really like to use this tool in the pen test that I do personally, um, because it does help give you more information about your target. So uh, what it really does is queries the host name or the IP addresses DNS server uh, and gives you as much information as it can. Uh, it'll do things like a records and all that good stuff. Uh, it'll try to do zone transfers, even though zone transfers really uh, are far and few in between these days because DNSSEC, places like Cloudflare, uh, you know, third party providers like that. So um, but it will give you some information to help you pinpoint your targets. So let's get started. So you fire up your Kelly Linux box uh, or whatever Linux machine you have if you have DNS and Anum installed there. Now this is one of many tools, like I said, that uh, I will use in a pen test uh, in my information gathering or recon phases. And uh, certainly you've probably seen our videos on that here on YouTube. Uh, and if you're part of our school at Pentest or University, uh, org, you'll probably have already seen that in some of the videos as well. So the command is simply, and you don't need to be root or you don't even need to be a su doer uh, to do this, so that's pretty good, uh, is DNS Enum, and of course you can always issue TACH for the help, and you can get a list of all the flags and arguments that it actually takes, and you can do some pretty in-depth stuff with this, and uh, I encourage you on your own time here to investigate every single one of these things. Um, Really, so you can do thread counts, um, you can do, you could specify DNS server, uh, and then that's going to use this um, DNS server for A queries, NS and MX queries as well. Um, you can do pretty much everything here. You can do some recursion, you can uh, exclude certain reg, uh, regexes, and you can actually output your results to a XML file. So it can be imported in things like Magic Tree or other, you know, such tools like that. So let's go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now, the, the website you're gonna see us using is actually uh, allowed, you're allowed to scan it. And it's called scanme.org, and that's actually created by the guy Fidor, which created Nmap. Uh, so kudos and a big shout out and thanks to him for allowing us to be able to scan. The only thing he asks is don't hammer his server with a, thousands of queries you know, every day. Uh, use it to test some of your tools. So let's go ahead and try it out. DNS and Noom and scanme.org whoops dot org and hit enter and you can see it actually puts it into a nice interface list for us here um, so let's go through some of the information and see what it came up with now mind you if you were to enter in some of those flags that we looked at in the help section uh, you probably get better results more results or more in-depth results um, but just a basic overview of the tool here uh, the host that we scanned was scanme.org, of course, and it listed as host addresses. And for scanme.org, the DNS A record here is 74.207.244.221. So that's what the IP address is of this actual domain name here. Uh, now you can see the name servers they use here. Um, looks like they're using five name servers. Uh, NS1, NS2, NS4, it's all at linode.com. And of course, those A records there pointing to those IP addresses of those specific DNS servers are in fact uh, looking like they're in the same subnet range. However, the last digits are different. So uh, that's something to note down. And it found a mail server here. Now, mail servers can be useful. Uh, you could check out to see what the mail server is. You could... Um, you know, go to see what uh, server version they're using of whatever, um, you know, SMTP or POP3 software they're using there. Uh, you can use this to be able to spoof. You can use this to brute force. You can use this for social engineering purposes using the first two scenarios. Um, so there's a wealth of information in that itself. Uh, it may not look much to you guys, but I will tell you that uh, it, it has helped me sometimes. Uh, especially if you're trying to find hidden IP addresses on a, a company's, um, say, for instance, you're doing an internal pen test or you somehow got into the network and they have their own name servers there. Well, of course, you're going to want to find out everything that belongs in that uh, name server. So any kind of hidden IP addresses or services maybe that are hiding on different servers somewhere, 
um, definitely a, a good tool. So, of course, like I said, it tried to do a zone transfer here and get the bind version. Bind is the software that runs most DNS servers, especially the ones out in the world these days. Um, and, uh, of course, it can't do any zone transfers. It was refused because I'm sure he's using DNSSEC or Cloudflare or something to that effect. Um, zone transfers are very, very bad, right? So uh, it used to be where that was like nobody really knew about it until we found out that zone transfers were quite possible by public users. Now you have to have keys and all sorts of stuff, but, um, you know, authoritative and stuff like that. But it was dangerous because it gave out just a, a crazy wealth of information. Um, so, of course, nowadays, uh, as time progresses, things get patched and fixed. So uh, that's definitely good. Um, you can specify brute force files to brute force subdomains. Uh, there's a crazy amount of stuff you can do with DNS and Noom, but um, that's pretty much it. That's the simplistic version of it. Again, I encourage you in your own time here to go through some of these flags and check them out and... Um, do some testing against uh, scanme.org. Um, and again, guys, I, I hope to see you in the school. A lot of you I, I do see in the school, and I appreciate all that. I appreciate the support. Um, it's definitely a more affordable option at pentesteruniversity.org than, say, sans pentest. And a lot of our information starts from start to finish, whereas it differs from our YouTube channel where there's no real way to put it into a sequence that makes sense if you're really looking to be a professional pen tester. So if you are looking to be a professional pen tester in 2017, it is a fast growing industry. It's growing at 37% projected by 2020 and we're in super high demand. I'm, I'm sure you guys saw what happened in 2016. Everybody was hacked. Everybody was fished. Everybody, I mean, everybody just went down. So um, this year it's in huge, huge, huge demand. So if you want to get on the train and uh, make some good money while you're having fun and doing what you like, head on over to pentesteruniversity.org and check it out. And again, guys, I'm going to do some more tool review videos here to keep the YouTube channel going. And uh, I will either see you in school or I will see you here next time. Thanks for watching.